Okay, this this happens on on, on a number of occasions because um, AT and T decided that they didn't want what I unfold on this phone to, uh, to be put up, so it just it just shut off the recorder automatically. Okay, um, but it sort of works like this. Uh, when you understand, for example, and, I, and I'll just see if I can remember what I said in the last one, it's never going to come out exactly the same because I'm not a Xerox machine, I'm not a robot, I'm not a cyborg or an android. Okay, I don't run off their system. Okay, that's been shut down. I'm a free spirit, which means I think whatever I want when I want, which means I'm allowed to experience whatever I want to experience because I got an enormous imagination. Okay, which means I don't let anything hold my mind, mind's energy captive. Never have. And that's true ever since I was four years old when I realized the distorted energy field that I was in because I'm not new to fighting wars like this. Okay. So it's an information war. And information travels on electrons. So they know how to use an electronic information field to send information through you. So that you experience what they want you to experience electronically, rather than what you experience electronically, holographically. And those are called magnetic moments. And they happen as an event. That event is sequenced. So it's much like a film. Remember the old 75 millimeter films they used to roll out in movie theaters? With the movie projector behind you, sitting in a seat, watching the screen right in front of you? So if you went up to the projector booth, that was called a reel-to-reel. -reel. And then you have what's called magnetic tape, reel-to-reel. Has ever been inside of a, well, for instance, when I worked for the, um, what was it? Uh, Rockwell International Space Transportation Group. And I was a firefighter there, okay? Um, and that meant I had to have a clearance, and I already had a top secret clearance with the Pentagon, and I also had a Q clearance with the Department of Energy. So that allowed me to have a key into every door, okay? So naturally, you, you imagine what I found out, <laughs> okay? Uh, so I went into all the different places that Rockwell had, which includes their uh, Space Transportation Group, which means uh, that was in Downey. They had Satellite Systems Command, which was all GPS, which was in Seal Beach. Right across from that facility was another division, which was called the Information Division. Rockwell Information, Information Sciences. You know, in that particular building, you got to go through a man trap where they have optical sensors, okay? So they can read your DNA and figure out who the hell you are, what's your identity. You're not trying to cloak your, your stuff, are you? I'm not going to get into all that. Uh, but you, when you go in there, you see all the reel-to-reels, supercomputers, <laughs> processing an enormous amount of data, right? That's what we do, as I explained in my previous tape. Okay, so when you're collecting an enormous amount of data, right, and uh, you're collating it, and you're keeping what it is that's important to you, okay, um, there's a reason why we do that. Much as I've said before, it's like putting a puzzle together. That puzzle represents essentially maintaining your own timeline, okay? So there's little anchor points along the way of events that I experience that lets me know I'm keeping my timeline intact. Because when you're four years old and you've already seen the future event, which is what I'm experiencing now, it means you can look down your timeline. So your future self can communicate back down through your DNA, which is the film strip. Okay? So essentially what it's like is the future self can communicate back to the past uh, when I was a little boy. Okay, so I'm, I'm getting, that's called intuition. That's sort of like following your intuition means you're following your timeline. Okay, so certain events will happen on your timeline and some, they'll get shifts because of the way that they can shift the timelines. Okay, and all of a sudden it's like a, you know, because of the waves that you're experiencing, which is like, time-space vectors that are shifting. 
So because you're hyperdimensional and spinning your macabre like crazy, multidimensionally that way, which is just as I previously described about all the data that's being experienced and that the soul, if you will, that is processing what it is that it's experiencing, okay, in all these time vectors, it's like, whoa, there's a shift. So you begin to realize that there are other forces at work, okay, that you just became aware of that are shifting energy frequencies and the identities of those frequencies between energy that's being held within those lines, anchored to those experiences that is sequenced based on DNA and your identity and your state of consciousness. How much consciousness, how many things are you running, okay, that is a part of what you are in consciousness, which goes all the way back to soul growth, right? How old are you? How much energy have you accumulated in light as a result of being in love and service to others, right? So the more that you keep growing your light as a result of love and service to others is soul growth. And what happens is, is as you're growing, the amount of what it is that you are aware of as a larger state of consciousness of information that you're aware of that represents a much larger universe all the information that represents what that is is held within your consciousness that you're aware of because of all those electrical connections that make you aware of it. Because the information is traveling through all those electrical fields, the filaments, like fiber optics, you know, all the cables in the cosmos is, is communicating everything that's being communicated, right, through the electrical fields. So um, you're net, in a network. You're part of the network, a dipole, a tripole, a fourpole, okay? Um, or binary, you know, dipole, an A node, a node, an antenna, and a network, you know? So when you consider that and you're going to unfold how a timeline is going to work, okay? I realized when I was a small child that if... The way in which humanity is being socially, electrically programmed engineering is really what it is. It's a network engineering. It's, it's programming your reality. And if you don't know that your reality is being programmed, this is where you get into quantify and qualitative assessment of vectors of time, space, that units of consciousness are on that particular timeline, means that if you have... X amount of beings that are in acid waste production at a high rate of speed that the alkalizers of your humidity cannot keep up with, then you lose yourself. You die early from bad diabetes or heart attacks. All the things that represent diseases as a result of the programming. And that doesn't even get into all the other genetics. So what ends up happening is, is that you can do a quantitative analysis on an XYZ axis. Actually, just map the terrain, map all the terrain holographically, and you can actually uh, calculate, uh, if you will, using a probability function, uh, approximately when humanity will collapse its own timeline and experience a catastrophic extinction event. Now, I've actually done the math on that before in the past. I was collecting an enormous amount of data that was almost not quite parallel because I did it when I was very young. But Guy McPherson, who's a conservation biologist at the University of Arizona, he did a fairly decent job that said we'll suffer a major extinction event by year 2030, 2040. But what he didn't realize in all that is that it was actually engineered okay, by beings that know how to do that, programmers. Okay, so if you don't know the difference between what you are and what you're not and the reality that you're experiencing is not the one you want to experience, then you don't have to experience that because that's your choice. But unfortunately for a lot of people, when they don't understand that, there are forces at work, good guys, that, have, that are going to unfold if you, when you think of a change in reality. If you're mapping the entire field, the terrain of consciousness, okay, 
then you want to be able to sort of unfold the events that take place on the event horizon timeline that represent what you are going to experience next, what everybody's experiencing right now across planet Earth can all be mapped. Okay? And that can be quantified uh, energetically across the entire spectrum within this energy field. So naturally, sort of like the way Patty Bessard mentioned a few years ago about when the Battle of the South Pole was won and the South Pole was moving northbound, and I think it was 46 miles an hour, we were trying to sort of quantify at what point or the pole's going to reach the weakest point and we have a shift. Well, as it turned out, right, um, the Arcturians came, stabilized the poles. Obviously, decisions have been made. The good guys are here. As events begin to unfold, you begin to realize that the 